Hi folks, how are you? I just got another request there, an email in, so it was for questions here from exercise 2.7. Um, and it was some of these trickier ones, so I'm just going to run through them. Um, I just do a copy them and I'm going to run through them nice and quickly. Um, I was going to send the questions up, but it's actually just as easy for me to do them like this and then just put them up um, on YouTube. So there's just a little strategy for these here. And it's manipulation formula, which are hugely, hugely, massively important. Okay, so I'm going to leave my questions there. So the first one we had was question 13. And you're, you've got A minus BC, and that's equal to half times B. And you're looking to get B. Basically, you want to get B in its own. Okay, so you want to manipulate the formula to get B in its own. So to start off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. And the reason I'm going to do that is to get rid of the half here. So that's going to be my step one. So if I multiply both sides by 2, so there's that by 2 and that by 2. What that's, what that's going to give me in effect is this. 2 times A minus B, C. Half times 2 is 1, so let's put B. So 2A minus 2B, C is equal to B. Then what you do is now... You're looking to manipulate it so that you've got just B in its own. So you want to get anything with B in it and multiply it by all together on the one side. Okay? So that allows me to do this. So 2A is going to be equal to B plus 2BC. So I've added 2BC to blow both sides, and that's where that goes to there. Then I can say that 2A, now this just comes down to the factorising rule. So it's kind of something we've touched on already, but we're factorising. So B is common to both of them. We can see that quite clearly there. Look, B and B. So if I take them out, B times 1 is B times 2C is that. And now look, I've got suddenly B on its own. Multiply by 1 plus 2C. So the opposite of multiplication is division. So I can then say that 2A divide both sides by 1 plus 2C, and I'm left with B. So my answer for that one there is B is equal to 2a over 1 plus 2c. Okay, so if you want guys, you can grab a, pause that and grab a screenshot of it. That's how it's done. I'm going to delete that now. I'm just going to look at question 15 is the next one I was asked to do. Okay, so question 15. And what we have here is uh, a is equal to p over p plus b. So the problem here is you've got a P above the line and a P below the line. We want to write P on its own. Okay. So again, you have to remember, P plus B is just really one number. So if I said to you that was 4, you'd multiply both sides by 4. If I said to you it was 10, you'd multiply both sides by 10. So then what we're going to do is we want to multiply both sides by P plus B. So A times P plus B is equal to P. Because if I have P plus B above the line, it can cancel. So then that leaves me with, multiply this out, AP plus AB is equal to P. Now it's in a much more manageable way. So again, what I'm looking to do is I'm looking to manipulate it, I want to get P here on its own. So we need all the P's on one side together. So I could say as follows, AB is equal to P minus AP. And just like the last question then, comes into factorising. So AB is going to be equal to P times 1 minus A. So divide now, just like P plus B, 1 minus A is one number. Whatever A is determines what that number is. So I'm going to divide both sides by 1 minus A. So AB over 1 minus A is equal to P. So the solution to that is P is equal to AB over 1 minus A. There you go. And that's that one there. Okay. So again, grab a screenshot of that, guys. You can look through our pause just to make sure that you understand it. And the next one then I'm going to do is 16. So question 16 is as follows. So we've got the square root of P all over O minus Q and it's equal to P. And it's all we want to get. Okay, so the very first step whenever you see a square root sign is you square both sides. All right? Whatever you do to one side, you're multiplying it by itself. Remember, if you've got an equal sign, okay? So if you've got an equal sign, if you multiply it by itself, that means the two sides are equal. So if you're multiplying it by itself, square on both sides. 
So P times O minus Q, that's a Q, not a 9, is equal to P squared. Now, over is what we're looking for. We've got O minus Q underneath the line here. Now, what we can do here is as follows. We can do P is equal to P squared times O minus Q. Now, as you practice these, what happens is you start to see these techniques. You're doing them over and over again. You, just, you don't even think about it. It's just bang, bang, bang. You're moving them around. It's, it's, it's like moving pieces on a board game. And you just know how to do different things. So you multiply this out. So P is going to be equal to P squared R minus P squared Q. And now what we do is R is what we want on its own. So we're going to bring this part here, this piece here, to here. Okay? We're going to do that to there. Now, so all I have then is going to be P plus P squared Q equal to P squared R. And remember, it's R is what we want to get. Okay? So then, divide both sides by P squared. So P plus P squared Q all over P squared. And that's equal to O. That's right. Now, you can simplify this again because look, P is common to above and below the line. So what I can do is, I can simplify that. Just do this over here. And you don't have to do this, but we just write this 1 plus P Q all over P. Plus PQ all over P and O is equal to that. And that's that one there. And then always just check your answer. So I square both sides. P O minus Q is equal to P squared. So P squared multiply both sides by O minus Q. And then you've got P is equal to P squared O minus P squared Q. Bring that over. I'm just checking this myself because sometimes I go too quick and I can make a mistake. So it's kind of good for you to see how you, you, you just check your answer. So P squared O is equal to that. Divided by P squared. Yeah, and it's simplified. And that's your final answer there. Okay, so that was question 16. And the last one then I'm going to get to, so the last one I'm going to do is going to be um, question 17. So 17, we've got A is equal to 1 minus X all over 1 plus X. And we're looking to get X. So again, multiply both sides what's beneath the line 1 plus X. It's only one number. So if that was a fraction, you'd, you'd all be able to do that. So it's just going to be A times 1 plus X equal to 1 minus x. Multiply it out, a plus a times x is equal to 1 minus x. And then you want to get all the x's on one side on their own. So there's a bit, bit, bit of manipulation of moving around here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get that and I'm going to bring it to this side here. So I'll add an x to both sides and I'm going to whip the a out there and move to there. Subtract a from both sides. What that ends up leaving me with is as follows. ax plus x is equal to 1 minus a. And it's x I want to get, so you factorize x times a minus a plus 1, and that's equal to 1 minus a. So then you divide both sides by a plus 1, 1 minus a, a plus 1, and that's that done. So what you can see with them four questions there, it's the same type of thing I'm doing. There's a bit of factorizing, manip and it's all just, that's what manipulation is. Think of it like a board game and you're moving pieces around. With, and it all revolves around the equal sign. And it's all mathematical procedures that you can do. It's hugely important. Get the basics of this right and it sets you up because it's one of the key, real key, key skills that you need. Okay, so any other questions, guys, just send them on in to me. Thanks a lot. Chat soon.